Where are you from? I'm from Glasgow, Scotland. <laughs> Far away from Los Angeles, where we are right now. And what was your first break? In acting work? <sighs> Directing Good Dick, the film that went to Sundance when I was really young, and writing it and producing it and self-releasing it. We really got to go all out with that movie. It went around the world. It was amazing. So I'm very proud of it. What have you been in? Um, Ned's, Peter Mullen's movie, which is a really important film about Scottish youth. It's non-educated delinquents. It's an acronym, so it's kind of a swear word in Scotland. So it's quite a provocative title. And that movie was fabulous. Um, been in Scottish Muscle, which is a conservationist comedy, really funny. Tallulah Riley directed that, and then also Girls TV show. I like, played Jess's sister, and I gave Adam my root chakra as part of my acting in that movie, and he's like, whoa! <laughs> what did I say, movie? It's a TV show, but it felt like a movie. Everything feels like a movie. How do you feel about oh? How do you feel about this career? This career of mine, mm -hmm. I feel really blessed to get to do my dream every single day. It feels like a gift to be able to do something that you want to do. It's incredible to be on Glow TV show on Netflix right now because we're fourteen women and our dreams came true simultaneously, and it's really fascinating to be an empowered female in the mainstream it's it's what i knew was going to happen i didn't realize it was going to happen for me it's great to be getting to do your dream so everyone out there should do their dream whatever it is how did you decide to become an actor i just knew it in the embryo i was my mom was pregnant with me and i was like have to do acting because I have never not wanted to do that. We had no television when I was a kid so we only watched movies and went to really good theatre in Edinburgh so I knew that I wanted to do what those people were doing which was being in their bodies and being artists and caring about the work, being able to heal life and people through stories. It's amazing. How would you describe your specialty or type? My type? Like nothing you've ever seen before. <laughs> There's never, like, I don't, I can't relate to, like, being a Polish person who's also a gypsy, uh, like, Roma blood person who's also basically Russian. It's very interesting to have that blood but be born in Scotland and then have Polish be my first language and then... I don't know, nobody, there's not a lot of people like me, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like 5'11", and I have this combo of of things going on. So I never felt like I had an example to be like, yo, that's who I can be like. I felt like I had to just blaze my own trail, which I think I, you know, I think it's good for everyone to feel like that. Like, you're, everybody's just themselves. I don't feel like anyone needs to feel like they're a type, you know? No, I'm a wrestler, though, so I guess I'm a wrestler. <laughs> That's my type. I'm a wrestler. <laughs> Who's your favorite actor you look up to? So many, but um, I love all the women on our show on Glow. They're such great actresses. And I've always looked up to Meryl Streep and Kate Blanchett. I love Ryan Gosling. Talk about a really great female <laughs> actress. Ryan is my favorite. <laughs> um, I looked up to him so, so much. I felt like he was knocking himself out every time he did something. He was just trying to impress himself. And I wanted to do that too. So that's really been an inspired thing to watch the people be amazing and stuff. I love actors. I love that it's actually, people think it's about lying, but it's actually about telling the truth. It's being truthful. It's not being a liar. What would your ideal job be? This, right now, what I am doing, Glow Netflix, <laughs> that's my ideal job. Do you consider yourself to be lucky? Yeah, but I also worked really hard. We did Bitch recently and I was 
you know, I directed that and I wrote that and I felt very lucky on that set, but also very much like a hard worker. Um, yeah, I'm a very serious, like I'm very serious. I like to prepare. I don't, I don't drink or do drugs or anything. I take it really seriously. I'm like sleep and I do this and that's it. That's my life. What advantages do you have? My mother never made me think about myself as a, from the outside, what I looked like. She made me think about who I am inside as a child growing up and how to be a great person so that when you age as a woman or you lose something as a woman that's external, you actually gain a lot of internal beauty. So she was always very much an example of internal beauty. That's really an advantage I feel like I have as a female. And the love of my family and friends in general, I know that my friends are so there for me. My friends are like right here, They're just supportive and loving. And that's such a huge gift to have a community of artists you can always count on. It's beautiful to be part of a circle like that. What did you do before? This, before acting and directing? Nothing. I've always done it. I felt like I was dancing on tables and doing monologues and stuff when I was a kid. Um, I've never not done this. It's a weird one. I was like street performing and when I lived in New York I would go on the subway and recite this Bob Dylan poem that is in Lion's Mouth Opens which is this documentary that's about my dad and um, Huntington's disease which runs in our family and just always getting it out you know couldn't stop making stuff into art performance wise you can't stop one stop <laughs> <laughs> would you rather have a car or a diploma a car or a diploma a car <laughs> definitely a car <laughs> what do you feel about the need for instant gratification? I love instant gratification. I'll take it right now. <laughs> how do you feel about how interconnected the world is becoming? I appreciate it because it makes me feel like people who need help or need to be seen can be seen faster and get help faster and I think that artistically it is making these groups of artists and creatives who are able to similarly heal each other. I think it's a really vital time to be alive. I'm so glad to be a director in this period of time and to be so able to make a difference out there. What was what does the future look like to you? Very bright. Always really bright. I think the next generation of artists is going to be amazing. They're going to be better than us and more passionate, more interesting, more human, more intimate. You know, everyone's scared of the internet, like it's this thing that is causing distance, and I don't think that's true. I think it's making us better people. How do you feel about having children? I want to have all of the children. Like, I want to have all the kids all the time. I want 500 children, and I don't think I can birth 500 children so I think I have to birth like one or two maybe so that'll work really well with me that's my jam I want to do everything with motherhood I'm going to be such a good mom and I I know my kids are going to feel great the way that my mom felt great about the way that I felt great about my mom my kids are going to feel great about me like that what challenges do you feel the world is facing today? I don't like that it's getting hotter. I feel like the world needs love and sweetness and feminine energy and tenderness. I feel like we have to look after ourselves and each other and we need to think about things in a new way and listen to the younger people because they always have the best ideas and really make a shift. The shift in consciousness I feel like has already happened and it's just going to keep happening. Um, stuff's no, no longer hierarchical, it's more of a circle and everyone's excited to be, it's not really about the self, the ego, it's about like being part of the community and helping and I feel like that's going to make 
I think that the connectivity of humanity right now is going to heal the world. I think that when the Dalai Lama said that the world will be saved by the Western woman, I think he was talking about all the women in the West, but he was also talking about all the men in the West who are connected to their feminine side. And I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> what are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful for the jobs that I've been getting and my ability to listen to what I'm supposed to do. Each step of the way it feels like I'm supposed to do something even more fascinating, even more compelling. And I, I love having inside me like this instrument of filmmaking where I can listen to great cinema and understand how to make it. And, and I, I love that it's innate in me. I'm so grateful for that innate skill as an artist. What is your favorite way to communicate? Doing interviews. <laughs> and having a conversation, having an interpersonal conversation with a loved one that's really hard, but is about difficult things where you feel like you're saying the absolute opposite from the other person. And it's really challenging. And you want to cry or you want to scream or you're angry, but instead of doing any of those things, you're listening and you're talking. That's my favorite way to communicate. The non-fight dynamic conversation in an interpersonal relationship is really compelling to me. What is your favorite book, film, and music right now? Great questions. <laughs> I love I Need My Girl by The National. It's a really special song, and I just have it right now in my car on a loop because I want someone to sing it to me. <laughs> I need someone to need me. Like, the little girl in me just needs, like, someone who would be like, oh my god, you're my girl, and I need you. Like, come here. Like, I was watching Last of the Mohicans recently, my favorite movie, Michael Mann, I Love You. When, in, in that movie, he's the most incredible character. That character is so devotional. I love men like Eros, I love Eros. I love men in things that are devotional lovers, like completely there, 100% attentive. Those are the stories that I, I really dig and I think it's because of my dad and my childhood and you know, him being so connected to me and him being like, you can do anything you want to do and I love you completely, um, no matter what. And I. So I love it when that's repeated in a story for me. It feels very real. So when I look at Last of the Mohicans, I really see that devotional love that a man can have. And how romantic that is, like when he's like, he's like looking at you and this, and he's not, like there's no blink in his eye. He's not blinking, he's not fidgeting. He's just loving her. Those are the things I read and take in musically and take in in film. The novel, I guess, that I would like the most would be Pride and Prejudice, just because it takes them so long to love each other. That is such a long courtship. Love Mr. Darcy. Can we talk about how he's basically the same person? He's like, I suddenly, even though I'm like the hardest person to like, I'm suddenly the greatest love of your life. She has to deal with that. It's so rough. 